Hey guys, what's going on? Kilson here. Today I'm going to teach you how to beat the Lionel on the Great Plateau of Master Mode of Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild in under 14 minutes. So I got my Switch booting up. Sorry about the video quality. Um, I don't yet have the technology to plug my Switch into my laptop, but I'm working on it so I can bring you guys higher quality videos in the future. But in the meantime, bear with me. It's still going to be an informative video. So, uh, the official... I did a little speed run here, and the, the time officially starts just after I hit New Game there. So now we're running the time. So the beginning section where you see, like, the Switch menu screen, none of that counts towards the speed run. It only counts once I hit New Game. So this is the little intro to the game. Um, I'm sure many of you guys are familiar with this, so the time's running. And there's a few things we want to do. Um, the most important thing is we need to collect the tools necessary to beat this Lionel. Um, it's, a, it's one of those white main Lionels, so it's quite powerful. It's one of the more powerful enemies you can encounter in the game. And uh, there's a, a few tools you need to beat this thing. You need a, a shield. doesn't need to be a good shield. It could be any shield, but you need a shield. You need a bow and arrow. You want it to be relatively decent strength. And you need um, a really good sword, two-handed sword. So I, I scavenged the whole Great Plateau, found out where all of the necessary items are, figured out the quickest route to get to those items, and then get to the Lionel and beat the Lionel as quickly as possible. <clears throat> Alright, so we're still in the Shrine of Resurrection here where Link wakes up, and we're just going through the cutscenes. really frustrating when you're trying to do a speed run and every single time you start out you have to redo this whole opening segment over and over and over again and watch these cutscenes again and again. This is a pretty good run. I think I made a couple of little mistakes here and there while fighting the Lionel, but uh, for the most part I executed all of the speed running parts pretty nicely. All of the parts where I'm on foot collecting my objects. Oh, and just in case you guys didn't know, I'm part of a sweet video game band, cover band, called The Koopa Troop. We're based out of Toronto, Ontario, Canada, and we've got some really badass cover versions of some older games and some newer games as well. We do the main theme for the new Smash Bros. We do some old classics like Mega Man, Super Mario, a lot of N64 stuff as well, so check us out, The Koopa Troop. We're also on YouTube. Alright, so here we finally bust out onto the plateau and we get our first look at the open world of Zelda. Shivers ran down my spine when I bought this game. I lined up the day before for the midnight release, waited in line for like seven hours, bought all the amiibos, the strategy guide, Not I didn't really use the strategy guide but I just wanted it as a collector's piece, uh, the Nintendo Switch and obviously Breath of the Wild here, the special edition I picked up. And uh, I was just so excited when I finally turned on the game and started playing. Alright, so now we're going to start our run finally. So the first thing I'm going to do is pick up this tree branch here. And uh, I'll show you guys why that's important a little later on. Now I'm going to run. There's a neat little trick you can do where it's called whistle sprinting. Um, when your stamina is about to run out, you can hold forwards on the control stick, back on the D-pad, and tap your run button, B and that will allow you to sprint without actually losing stamina. It's not quite as fast as a full out sprint. So I'm alternating between full out sprinting and then the whistle sprint. Okay, so here's a little enemy encampment. I'm gonna sneak up. I don't want them to see me because if they see me they're gonna grab this shield. I need this shield or a pot lid, but it works as a shield anyways. Okay, next I'm gonna go for these uh, spicy peppers here because they're gonna help me get through the cold section which I need to navigate. I'm not going to cook them into a, a meal because that's going to take too much time. I'm just going to collect some so that I can revive hearts as I go, as I lose my health. 
because when you go into the cold section here in the mountains, you do lose health. All right, so, oh yeah, one more little speech message from Zelda here. Um, just let this end. Okay, here we go. Now we can start our journey again. Now we're running through the mountains, and I need to make my way to a very important Knight's Claymore, which is the only item on the Great Plateau which, which can actually take out the Lionel before breaking. So that's really important to get this Knight's Claymore. So I'm running over here, I'm going to climb this wall, three jumps, and that should be just enough to not run out of stamina, or I did run out of stamina, but I made it up anyways. Collect the treasure chest. This contains some arrows, which I definitely need to beat the Lionel. These enemies are going to see me, but I'm just going to keep running, keep running. And now when I get to this wall, I want to have full stamina again so that I can start climbing the wall. One jump, any more than one jump, and you're going to run out of stamina before you get to your destination. So it's really important that you only jump one time. Now my health's running low because I've been too cold. So now I'm going to press pause. I'm going to use a couple spicy peppers and that's going to rejuvenate my health fully. So now I've got my health back up. I'm ready to continue my climb. Now you can see there's a little ledge up to my right, which I'm climbing towards. And uh, it was actually pretty fun figuring out this route because I didn't realize I could climb all the way without running out of stamina initially. So that was kind of a new thing. I jumped at the end there just to save a bit of time. Okay, collect the treasure chest. It's going to contain five fire arrows, which are also really important for defeating this Lionel. Now here's why I need the tree branch. This guy right here fires bomb arrows, but if you hit him with the tree branch, you can stagger him for a second, which prevents him from firing the arrows, which lets you go jump down to the next ledge and grab your knight's claymore, which you're definitely gonna need. If you're lucky, it'll have a, an attack up six and you'll have 44 damage. I wasn't so lucky this time around, but I'm still managed to get the job done, even with only the 38. Okay, run into this little cave. There's another soldier's broadsword. That's gonna help with the fight as well. Here we get our bow. It's a 12 attack, which is pretty decent. There are some better bows on the plateau, but the 12 should be fine. So I wanted to save as much time as possible, so I just went for that. There's four, five more fire arrows. Here's five more regular arrows. So now I'm equipped with my, okay, now I'm gonna warp because I'm about to die from the cold. So now I warp back to the main cave where it's not cold anymore. And that allows me to get, navigate the whole cold section without having to cook any um, cold preventative food or collect the cold preventative tunic. So I can skip all that with just using a few spicy peppers. So now I've collected all of my necessary tools for defeating the Lionel. I got my shield. I've got 20 arrows, uh, 10 bomb arrows, and sorry, 10 fire arrows and 10 regular arrows. That should be more than enough. And I've got my Boko bow, which is a level 12. And I've got my soldier's broadsword. Don't need that tree branch, gonna get rid of that. Pull out my fire arrows. I've got my knight's claymore. I'm gonna revive my health with those last few peppers I have. Now I'm gonna make my way to the Lionel. So the Soldier's Broadsword helps quite a bit as well because you can inflict extra damage in between your main attacks with the Soldier's Broadsword. It's going to break fairly quickly, but it, the little bit of damage that it does definitely helps to add towards defeating the Lionel as quickly as possible. But my main my main form of attack is going to be using the, uh, the Knight's Claymore and jumping on the Lionel's back. And a really cool, interesting thing that I learned maybe, I don't know, maybe a week or two into owning the game was that you can actually jump on a Lionel's back and, and do some attacks while you're on its back. Um, and the awesome thing about this is it doesn't add to your weapon breaking. So as long as you're attacking the Lionel, oh, this little guy tries to get me, escape him. As long as you're attacking the Lionel while you're on his back, you're not gonna lose durability from your weapons, which is awesome. So that's the trick to being able to defeat this guy. Um, so there's the Lionel down there, just in that patch of trees there. So I'm gonna shield ride down, shield surf down. Immediately he sees me. I'm gonna fire an arrow right in his face right away. That's, that'll stagger him. Now I can hit him a couple times with the nice claymore, jump on his back. Now here's what I'm talking about. All those hits right there, you can do five hits in total. None of those took durability away from my weapon. So my weapon isn't at risk of breaking while I'm riding his back and attacking him. You have to do a lot of shield parries. Now this is a difficult technique. You have to learn the timing shoot him in the face again, stagger him, I can do some claymore spinning. Now that will break my weapon, but I'm not going to do it to the point where it's going to break. I'm just getting those extra hits in there as long as my weapon is still alive. Okay, 
Um, so yeah, as I was saying, the shield parry is a very important technique in this fight. This is also a really good opportunity for, for a flurry rush, fury, uh, fury rush, flurry rush, whatever. That's when I pull out the knight's broadsword because I don't want my main knight's claymore to break. Okay, now I'm going to back up. He do, does a little spin, shoot him in the face again, stagger him, pull out my knight's claymore. Oh, for some reason it didn't work that time. So I just jump on his back and do the, the attacks. Because if you wait too long, he will get back up again and attack you. He's coming around for another round. Oh, he's doing a fire attack, so I want to get out of the way of that. He shoots three shots, then you can pull out your bow, stagger him again. As long as you hit him in the face, you're going to stagger him to the ground. If you miss his face, he'll get up immediately and he'll start attacking you. And you're at in severe danger of getting attacked by his... Uh, club he'll pound his club into the ground if you're not fast enough so good I got the parry I got the shot in the face I got a couple hits with the claymore then I jump on his back before he gets up again now I can do my five claymore attacks on his back which isn't taking away weapon durability as I've said and it's just a matter of getting everything down timing everything here oh I missed the flurry rush that time but that's okay shoot him with an arrow while he's there He's got some more fire. This one's pretty easy to dodge. You just run around him as he shoots the fire. Now, if I had my uh, paraglider, I could use the flames to fly up into the air and hit him with arrows. But I wanted to do this as quickly as possible, so I didn't waste any time getting the paraglider or anything like that. I didn't even access the first tower of the game. I wanted to just do this right off the bat. So when he does his little thing there where he sends a shockwave out, he's about to shoot a huge ball of fire everywhere around him. That will just consume you and kill you instantly. But if you get in there, you can shoot him in the face quickly. There's another shield parry. Shoot him in the face one more time. Stagger him. Pull out the broadsword, or sorry, the claymore. Do a couple spin attacks. Jump on his back. And so yeah, you can just see that it's a it's a matter of timing. It took a lot of practice to get these time, the timing of all these attacks down. This especially, that one is really really hard. I got killed by that so many times when he comes and swings his club down at you. And oh man, if I got hit by that shockwave, I would have been dead. That's the other thing, it's like, very rarely can you survive a hit from this Lionel without being killed. It's like, if you get hit by one thing, when you only have three hearts like this, you're done for. So you have to be extremely careful if you're going to attempt this speed run. Another parry, and if you miss the parry, he'll break your shield and then you'll be completely defenseless. So you can't miss a parry, you can't get hit. This is a really precise fight, you have to be precise, you have to get a lot of practice, but it's possible. You can definitely do this, as I'm showing you now. So his health's coming down. I think I get a flurry rush here. Nice. Pull out the broadsword, because you don't want your claymore to break. If this sword breaks, that's okay. We're just trying to get extra shots in with that as much as possible. If you After he, after he does his flurry rush, if you wait by him for a second, he'll do a spin attack. It's easy to uh, to shoot him in the face after the spin attack. I missed it that time. So then he started shooting fireballs, and unfortunately I got hit by a fireball, but that's one of the only attacks that you can actually survive with three hearts, so luckily that didn't end my run. So there, my broadsword's broken, but that's okay, I've still got my claymore, jumped on his back, and again, the durability doesn't break as long as I'm on his back. So now he's getting really, really close, my heart was pounding right now, I really wanted to do this run. Oh, there's a really tough, another really tough one, like I said before, that's the hardest one to parry. So close now, do another claymore spin jump on his back, hit him a couple more times. I'm hoping he's dead, but he's still not dead. It's so frustrating. Okay. <laughs> nice, so that's this bomb attack. I'm gonna run away, make sure I don't get hit by that bomb. Now I can run back towards him, shoot him in the face again. Ah, oh, I didn't stagger him, so now I gotta put my shield, get on the offensive, parry. One final parry, and this should, this should be it, I think. There it is. Oh, no, not quite. There we go, there we go, nice. Took that Lionel down and take some screenshots just for swagger and now I'm gonna have a look at all the spoils so this is amazing to get this this stuff oh right I'm gonna take a look at my photo album to see those screenshots that I took <laughs> temple of time in the background there okay so now I get to look at these spoils so some really great stuff here this bow is incredible 32 damage times three it shoots three arrows and nice, uh, the best thing about that is it only takes one arrow from your inventory, which is awesome. This guy dropped 40 bomb arrows this time, which is incredible. 
And all of his uh, monster parts, his lionel horns and hoofs and whatnot, they can be sold for a high price or used to make some really nice elixirs. And then that Savage Lionel Club, unfortunately it was only a 78. I've actually gotten a 108 from it. It's kind of like a random RNG, what you're going to get from, from him as a drop. But uh, I'm hoping when I do my full master mode playthrough that uh, I can get a 108 club off this guy so that I can just mess shit up right from the beginning. So now I'm just going to have some fun and play around with the, with the new stuff that I got. Show you how much damage it can do. On master mode it's actually quite difficult at the beginning of the Great Plateau because you have nothing and all of the enemies have been upgraded so you have blue bokoblins instead of red bokoblins which are much more powerful and their health heals quite a bit faster so um, you know you go in there with a, a flimsy little stick or like a crappy little sword and it's broken after fighting one enemy so it's really hard to manage your weapons on master mode at least in the beginning later on it gets much easier but after I killed this Lionel I can just mess these guys up bomb arrows galore Yeah, this is just me having some fun afterwards. I'm going to stop the narration now. You guys can keep watching if you want. You see me mess some stuff up with these uh, bomb arrows and the Savage Lionel Club. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed my speed run of beating the Lionel as fast as possible. From the moment that I started the file to the moment that the Lionel died was approximately 13 minutes and 45 seconds. Uh, and yeah, if you guys like that challenge, I invite you to try and beat my score, try and beat my time. And if you have any suggestions on how to make this run even faster, by all means, please let me know in the comments below. Alright, thanks very much. Kilson out.